Sometimes I think we overthink sleep. A lot of sleep is driven by simply sleep pressure. Just like if you were really hungry and starving for days, all of a sudden you start craving lots of food and you have a just innate need to go get food. When you are inducing sleep pressure, you need more sleep. If you have less sleep pressure, you need less sleep. So what can we potentially do to decrease our need for sleep? We don't want to just sit on our butts all day and not work out and not do things to have less pressure. Are there ways that we can have less pressure and be able to get by with less sleep and still maintain cognitive performance? Let's dive in. After today's video, there's a link for 20% off of Organifi. Now, I'm a huge fan of Organifi's red juice. They make green juice, they make gold juice, they make chocolate gold juice, all kinds of different things, but their red juice is my jam. And the reason is because I get enough vegetables in, but sometimes if I'm doing lower carb stuff, I don't get a whole lot of fruits in, and I really do want those antioxidants, I do want those polyphenols. And the cool thing is Organifi also adds adaptogenic compounds as well. So they're using a smorgasbord of different fruits and veggies all in a drink that only has a couple grams of carbs. Now I've known Drew Cannoli for like eight years now, I've known him for a long time. He's the founder of Organifi, really solid person that puts his money where his mouth is with this product. So the red juice is something, again, if you're looking because maybe you're sleep deprived, and maybe you have a lot of just free radicals like floating around because you're stressed out, you're not sleeping. Aside from getting good sleep, a good thing to do is to support the antioxidant function within your body. And giving yourself good fruits and veggies to do that is always a good route to go, but we don't always have time to eat a beautiful salad or a Mediterranean salad with a bunch of fruits. So that link down below will save you 20% off. Just use that code that's on the screen and down below in the description to check out Organifi. So our need for sleep is driven by an energy deficit within the brain. Okay, when we have just sort of an imbalance of ATP and adenosine that are building up in different areas, that's going to drive us to sleep. Now, I don't wanna make this an overly complicated video. I wanna make it pretty simple. Okay, what we're looking at is creatine supplementation in small amounts to actually reduce the need for sleep. Now, check out this interesting study. So it was conducted on rats, so full disclaimer, but it's starting to paint a picture of what's going on here. They took a look at sleep-deprived rats. Okay, and then they put them on a normal rat chow diet, whatever the heck they eat, for two weeks. Okay, then they did a very similar thing, except they put them on a simple, same standard chow diet, plus 2% of their body mass of creatine. So they supplemented creatine for a little bit, and they did this for four weeks. Okay, and what they found was really interesting. They found that creatine significantly decreased their sleep time, and it decreased their slow wave sleep and it decreased their non-REM sleep. Now, at first glance, you look at this and you say, well, this is a bad thing, it decreased their sleep. But when you're in a very controlled situation and you can control for physical activity and you can control for all these things, you can really get more granular. The only variable here was they added creatine in and it decreased their amount of sleep. Compare that to the control diet, they ended up sleeping more. They had more non-REM sleep and more REM sleep. Now, why is this potentially happening? Well, first I'll start molecularly, and then I'll get a little more simple and sort of anecdotal, okay? So basically they found that phosphocreatine levels increased in the prefrontal cortex, also in the basal forebrain and the hippocampus. Now, what this did is it essentially provided an exogenous energy for the brain, so it didn't really have to tap into its energy stores as much, therefore reducing the actual need for sleep. Now, creatine is created by the body naturally, and a lot of times we get it from the diet, but when we take an exogenous form and we get more of it, we're sort of buffering that ATP a little bit. So what this ultimately did is it decreased what is called extracellular adenosine six hours after deprivation. Adenosine is what drives sleep. When adenosine rises and builds up, we get tired. It eventually binds to receptors and makes us tired. To give a simple analogy or a simple, I guess, context, caffeine, blocks adenosine receptors, right? So when you block an adenosine receptor, your brain wakes up because the tired molecule isn't able to bind. So in this particular case though, we're actually reducing the level of the tired molecule in the first place because there's more brain energy. So what happens when we get tired is very fascinating. Okay, we have adenosine that builds up extracellularly, and we actually have ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that builds up intracellularly. So again, when creatine comes into the equation, it changes the buildup here. 
Now, how this actually works and makes us tired, we need to have sort of a visual scale to look at to help us understand in a very simple way. I want you to imagine that you're flying in a plane and you're flying over a really just big city and there's lights on everywhere at night, okay? So it's nighttime, you see all these lights. Then all of a sudden, just little areas of the city just go black. Boom, lights just shut off until eventually the whole city's just out, totally black. Okay, but it was doing it in sections. Well, this is sort of what happens when we get tired. As adenosine builds and as ATP builds intracellularly, it causes inflammation. Now you think inflammation's bad. No, inflammation is part of life. So when we increase these cytokines, these IL-6 and TNF that are particularly increased, it actually blocks signaling and forces that section of the brain to turn off. So the stages of getting tired are actually stages of your brain sort of shutting down, the lights going off. Okay, so this inflammation is a good thing unless we're chronically tired, then it's a problem, right? But when we increase levels of creatine that are in the brain, it makes it so that that pressure doesn't cause the cytokines to release. So you're basically making it so the inflammation doesn't need to turn on. You don't need to shut off portions of the city. So the brain is able to function better and longer with less sleep because you've provided a superficial layer of energy for the brain. But you would think that cognitive performance would still decline, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you're still getting less restorative sleep. So even though you're getting by and you're awake on less sleep, what would happen to your cognitive performance? Well, there are some studies that look at that. And not just any study. There was a study published in Experimental Gerontology that was a meta-analysis looking at six different studies. And they found that supplementing creatine increased short-term memory and also increased intelligence and reasoning. Now, these are pretty short-term things, okay? So it did help with like, basically the hippocampus and being able to access memory really quick, like short-term memory. So we know that we actually have an increase in cognitive performance, which is quite interesting. But there was also an interesting study that took a look at the mood state. Now, a lot of the cognitive decline that we see pertaining to sleep deprivation has to do with our mood state. We're not in a good mood, we feel terrible, and therefore that kind of downstream affects things. So what this study found is that people that were six, 12, and 24 hours sleep deprived, when they had just five grams of creatine versus placebo, it basically restored them back to normal. Their cognitive performance was as if they were not sleep deprived. Their visual memory was as if they were not sleep deprived. Their executive function was as if they were not sleep deprived. Now what's interesting, and this is somewhat early on, almost just theory at this point, is that creatine seems to help a lot of the short-term processes that are associated with executive function, okay? But it does not seem to help with like the long-term memory and sort of the phonological loops. So what this means is that you may not want to chronically take creatine and get by on less sleep, okay? But if you feel like you're going through a spurt where, hey, I need to maintain mental function for a few days and I might not be able to get as much sleep, short-term intermittent creatine use, like maybe two and a half grams or even five grams or something like that. I think most of the studies were looking at like 50 to 100 milligrams per kilogram of body mass. So you could do the equation there if you really wanted to figure out what's perfect for you. They found that 100 grams seems to be better. It is dose dependent up to 100 grams. So a perfect example of when you may want to do this, let's say is purely hypothetical. Let's say you're an actor, okay? And you have to fly to another country and you've got to film like three days of crazy intense script okay and you know you're gonna be sleep deprived well that would be a good time where you could probably maintain cognitive function on limited sleep and still get by with your short-term stuff it does not mean that it's good long term though then when you get back to the States and you get back to your normal thing or whatever then maybe you cycle off of it so you use it strategically so anyhow I hope that this helps and gives you a tool that you can utilize to get the best out of your life I'll see you tomorrow